Next, I want to talk about how Optane works great in storage use cases. Um, I'm going to focus on software-defined storage and hyperconverged infrastructure. Um, but before I do that, I just want to throw a shout out. Um, in traditional NAS and SAN, you know, we're in Dell EMC, PowerMax, uh, Pure Storage Flash Array X, and IBM Storage Appliances. And what they're saying to their customers is basically, I can improve my SLA latency by about 50%. So they're seeing good traction in demanding workloads, like for example, in financial services, uh, where latency is super, super important. But let's let's go to um, software-defined storage first. So let's talk a little bit about Ceph. So I think everyone here will be pretty familiar with Ceph. It's the biggest uh, open source uh, software-defined storage out there. Intel's actually the uh, third largest contributor to the uh, open source community and the code base uh, for Ceph. Um, and it's basically, it's a software layer that uh, provides the control plane uh, for the data, it's for data placement, uh, for encryption, um, deduplication, uh, cluster management, et cetera. And uh, one of the things is with the new Blue Store uh, file system uh, version of Ceph uh, versus the old file store, uh, there were some improvements made, um, which en enables you to place metadata in a high performance uh, storage uh, device. So looking at this example here, uh, we put the RocksDB write-ahead log in the uh, this device in the RocksDB database. And because the uh, writes persist uh, to the uh, write-ahead log, and it's super low latency and performant under load, you can destage asynchronously to the, to the database. And then uh, what, what this enables overall is some pretty nice results. Um, what we've seen is uh, you can get uh, up to a 80% uh, improvement in P99 tail latency, uh, about a 53% improvement in average latency. And if you were to do a, um, a all SATA SSD deployment, for example, versus this architecture, uh, you could get about 2X uh, the storage per node. So uh, that would actually lead to uh, about a 70% uh, node reduction um, if you did it across a, a large uh, deployment. Um, we've actually seen pretty good traction um, with uptake in this. A lot of um, uh, mid-sized cloud companies and CSPs are using this architecture because they're using uh, open source Ceph. And then uh, using uh, you know such products as from Red Hat, um, you know, version of Ceph, um, retail and energy uh, have had some pretty big deployments and they're very pleased uh, with the results. Uh, Intel's contributing, uh, is continuing to contribute to the code base here. And with the upcoming Crimson drop, uh, we expect uh, to have client-side caching and um, NVMe optimizations, which is really important because that will help lower the data path uh, 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 latency even more to take full advantage of the Optane drive. Next, I'm gonna move on to uh, hyper-converged uh, infrastructure and uh, talk about an up and coming uh, HCI um, appliance. Uh, this is Cisco HyperFlex. Uh, they're one of the smaller HCI um, uh, vendors out there, but they're, they're rapidly uh, increasing uh, market share. And one of the things we did uh, to help them is we worked with them from the grounds up uh, to develop their storage data path. So on their new uh, uh, HyperFlex uh, 4.0, all NVMe, it's all um, it's all NVMe optimized. There's no legacy transla translation, for example. Uh, you don't have to go back and look at, uh, let's go to SCSI and back. Uh, and translate and waste hundreds of microseconds uh, doing something like that, uh, for example. Um, we also worked so it can be direct attached to the CPU uh, through a function of the CPU called VMD. And this assures uh, both uh, RAS capabilities and the lowest latency uh, data path uh, for uh, Cisco HyperFlex. And one of the results we've seen of this uh, is you can actually run uh, the Epic database, which is notoriously uh, tough to run uh, on, on an HCI environment, it usually has to be run on um, a bare metal. So the, um, <clears throat> the healthcare community is very excited by that. Uh, and HC and uh, Cisco just recently published a, a white paper on how that works. But let's go talk about the uh, Los Angeles uh, Dodgers. Uh, so they had, a, they had a problem where they were looking at how do they simplify and streamline their, their IT infrastructure. And uh, they're dependent on their IT infrastructure for really spiky workloads. So, so just imagine what they do. You know, they've got to sell tickets. They've got to take tickets on game day. They've got to go run concession sands. 
And then they're most likely looking at, hey, you know, how can I optimize, take data from the game to, to improve um, our strategy going forward? And so they have these very spiky workloads uh, that they need that extra capability on demand and for the system not to be able to be impacted by that. Um, and, but they also wanted to simplify. So what they were able to do is they basically went from a room full of servers uh, <coughs> to less than, less than a rack of servers. So they saved the uh, footprint and licensing costs improved by 70%. And the really cool thing is their analytics processing. These models used to take 13 hours to run we're now taking uh, uh, 60 minutes or less. And uh, Ralph, Ralph Escobal, who's their, uh, their CTO, um, basically said, we thought this was broken because we didn't think this was possible. We thought we were getting errors on our models. Uh, we did a lot of checking on this and every time they came back robust. Uh, so huge, huge performance uh, improvement for them. Uh, they always have that capability on demand for when they need it. And now they're able to shift their uh, IT resources to focus on growth and innovation uh, versus just keeping uh, the, the system up. Uh, it seems to be paying off. They're at the top of the uh, National League West right now. So uh, good, good, good for the Dodgers and good luck to them this season. All right, uh, and next, uh, I noticed going through a lot of your, your backgrounds, a lot of you are VMware experts. So I'm not going to claim your level of expertise on uh, VMware. Uh, but I'll tell you about some uh, use cases we're using for Intel Optane SSDs um, in a VMware vSAN. But first at this, when you go look at this block diagram and you do a complete VMware implementation, for example, like VMware Cloud Foundation, you can put the uh, Intel Optane persistent memory in there for expanded memory, so more memory per VM. And then uh, in the storage, you can use the Intel Optane SSD as part of the cache tier. Uh, and I'm going to focus on uh, the, v the vSAN storage part. And so what we see here is all the writes go to the cache tier. And because Optane latency is so low, you don't run into these big D stage events like you would with a NAND drive. So for example, when a NAND drive is about 30% 30, 30 uh, full, you have a mandatory D staging, which uh, slows down the capability of the uh, VMware vSAN. Uh, with Optane, you don't face that. And you can get away with a, a much smaller drive uh, for, for with using Optane. And the nice thing, some of the performance measurements we've seen on this are, are pretty amazing. And uh, we basically see about a 60% improvement in VMs. Uh, we, can, we see about a 33% reduction in nodes. So for example, if you're deploying six nodes before, you could go to four nodes. We see about a 25% improvement in three-year TCO. And uh, the, the other cool thing is we started looking at the operations after setup. Um, and we've got a lot of this data because we're getting a lot of deployments uh, with VMware vSAN. And so with some of our customers, what we learned is <clears throat> with these, uh, and we, we published uh, material on this, is uh, you know, on day-to-day -day operations, on, on day one operations, uh, you can see a 15% improvement. So when you're, when you're doing snapshotting, cloning, and SV motion, uh, you know, those operations regularly, you're seeing an overall 15% improvement. You're also seeing a 60% improvement uh, in database uh, running online transaction processing or uh, new orders per minute. Um, so we have, we've had a long uh, partnership with uh, VMware. Um, on the storage side, we started with them, you know, developing the caching tier uh, with the original SSDs. We, uh, we worked to optimize NVMe and we've worked to optimize um, uh, Optane uh, as the, uh, the cached here. Uh, they've published, uh, their architects have published blogs on this as well, and uh, we can make those available to you uh, if you like. So on the right, uh, I have a Cerner quote from them. They're, uh, the, the, in North America, they're the biggest um, uh, IT provider to health and life sciences and medical co community. And uh, they're amazed at the, uh, the responsiveness, high ride endurance and the capabilities that vSAN uh, ran. And they've actually come back to us and even stated that, hey, in this current uh, COVID environment uh, with these spiky uh, workloads, um, it's, been, it's been a great solution uh, for those who have deployed it. Uh, we have other, uh, in, in, the back, in the material that you'll get, 
you'll see other case studies from like uh, Telefonica, for example, and IDC Frontier um, on other vSAN deployments. And then um, before I wrap this up, I understand you also got to spend time uh, with Vast Data uh, on Tech Day, and uh, th they have a very uh, interesting implementation using Optane and QLC. Um, they use the Optane um, for uh, compression and encryption, and the TLC is it, they can they can stage the data in the Optane, use the TLC, uh, you know, to do a kind of write once, read many, and their their uh, their tagline is you know, flash performance at legacy storage prices. Uh, and hopefully uh, you, you got to see um, uh, all that uh, information from them. And they're, they're actually growing um, pretty fast and uh, making a pretty big impact in the storage community. Hey, Chris. Um, yes. You mentioned the VMware vCN performance improvements. Was that also, did that include the expanded memory with uh, PMM as well, or just the Optane? Th that was specifically with the, uh, just with the Optane SSD measurements. Okay. That's good. 